Hi, this is Gary. You're watching a tutorial on how to play Risk. In this segment, we're going to look at uh, strategies and concepts uh, for the two-player game. To start off, uh, we want to look at the big picture. Not just uh, how a decision affects us, but uh, how a decision affects our opponent as well. Uh, take, for example, reinforcements. We can make a decision that increases our reinforcements, but we also have to look at uh, what our opponent's going to get reinforcements for the next turn, and there might be a better decision that way. Uh, what we want to try to do uh, is look at the big picture and uh, how we can make decisions that impact it in the best way. One of the components of the big picture is territories. Uh, since there's only two players, um, either you have the territory or your opponent has the territory. Now, as you can see below, the more territories you occupy, the uh, more reinforcements you get. And conversely, the less territories you occupy, the less reinforcements you get. Uh, so when it's your turn, if your opponent leaves a bunch of uh, one army uh, countries, it may be a really good idea to attack those countries, not only because the percentages uh, it will help you drive down their number of armies without taking losses, but it will also knock down their territories and it will knock down their future reinforcements, uh, which is another component of the armies. Let's say in this example they have 40 armies and they're getting 7 reinforcements. Well, if we take out 7 armies, uh, their armies go down to 33, plus their reinforcements drop from 7 to 4. So instead of getting 47, doing nothing, going out and taking out those seven armies, uh, knock them down to 33, 37. So you, you've knocked your armies down by 10. You want to try to think in terms of that way when you're uh, making up a strategy here. Now the uh, next piece of the big picture we're going to look at is armies. And we're going to take a look at uh, how armies uh, affect in terms of uh, attack power. Uh, if you see the uh, attack diagram up there, if you have uh, four armies, you could attack with three dice. If you have two, three armies, you can attack with two dice, and, and so forth. Now, if you look below, we have the probability of winning uh, against one defender. And if you look at the chart there, uh, our best odds are in green, that's where we are favored. Uh, the red is when we're at a disadvantage. So if we have, let's say, four armies occupying, and we get three uh, dice against one defender, we're going to win two out of three times. And as I said earlier, uh, one strategy to lower the number of territories your opponent uh, has, in addition to reinforcements, is to uh, put together a string of troops and attack any countries with uh, one dice uh, or one die uh, defending them, or one army defending them, and that improves your probability of uh, winning throughout the game. Now the uh, next chart I have here is uh, when the defender has two dice and the attacker has anywhere from two to, to four armies or, or more. Uh, as you can see, the uh, red is not good for the attacker. The yellow is uh, not good for the attacker either. And the green is the, uh, the, best, the best odds for the attacker would be where they have four armies against two or maybe ten against two. Uh, and then there's a number of different outcomes. Uh, one outcome could be losing two, winning two, uh, splitting, and, and, and so forth. Now all of this data you can either get off from uh, Wikipedia or just running a simple uh, Google search. You should be able to, to, to find this, these numbers here. Uh, the key point that I'd like to drive home is you want to uh, try to find miss matches, uh, preferably against one army, because your percentages are, are much better than they are with uh, two, and lower an opponent's uh, territories. Now, if you have to, if they occupy a big continent, uh, you might want to revert your strategy and attack the continent. Uh, essentially, what you're looking to do is uh, lower the amount of reinforcements uh, they get in their next turn. And if you can, eventually uh, try to increase yours, but uh, I 
when you're playing heads up, you're basically trying to lower the amount of reinforcements that your uh, opponent gets. The next piece we want to look at in the big picture is uh, continents. Continents are uh, fairly important if you occupy the big ones. I'm going to list below uh, how many armies you get or bonus armies you get. Uh, the problem with continents is they're hard to defend, or at least some of them are. Uh, Asia has five borders. It's pretty hard to defend. Uh, Europe's pretty hard to defend. Uh, Value-wise, uh, the two best continents, uh, in my opinion, and in most people that play's opinion, are uh, either Australia or uh, possibly later in the game North America. And... Um, in order to have a continent like North America, what you might want to do is uh, spread out uh, armies and keep them in like groups of three or four in like three or four different territories. So you always have the option or the threat of taking that. Uh, the good thing when you're playing heads up is there's only three borders uh, to that. Uh, Australia is another continent uh, that's worth looking into. But you also have to remember that you're only getting two bonus armies. Uh, so sometimes it might actually be better to go after territories. The next component we're going to take a look at is uh, cards. Now, cards uh, play a role later in the game, not so much early. As you can see, their uh, value uh, starts off pretty low, but it goes up as time goes on. You also get a miscellaneous uh, bonus of two uh, if you occupy the territory that's on one of the cards you trade in. So you can get up to six bonuses for that. Uh, as we look at the graph below, um, a card set values changes over time. Uh, the more armies you get, the later later on in the game we go. So for the fifth or sixth set, uh, the armies start building up and you know, having three or four cards can have a big impact where you might want to actually attack uh, your opponent where instead of being conservative because if you don't attack, they're going to get a bunch of reinforcements and you want to minimize that if you can. Okay, let's summarize and take a look at uh, some good two-player strategies here. Now, when you are first to move, you want to try to occupy as much territory as possible because it lowers the amount of reinforcements your opponent gets. Uh, you might also want to consider continents and fortifications, uh, depending on uh, the, the risk return uh, as we've, we've looked at the big picture. Uh, basically, you want to try to attack the, the one-chain countries and think about uh, what way ways you can uh, best affect the uh, big picture. Now when you're second to move, you're actually at a little bit of a disadvantage. Uh, so what you want to try to do is think in terms of defense. Now uh, the more territories you occupy at the end of your opponent's turn, the more reinforcements you get. Uh, the implications of that are uh, you should consider placing two armies on as many countries as possible uh, because it, the percentages aren't as good when your opponent attacks a group of two armies instead of one army. Uh, it goes down from 66% to like a little around 50-50-ish, or maybe a slight advantage for the attacker. It also uh, will provide you flexibility for future attacks. If you have two and you get four or five reinforcements, now you have seven, and you can attack from anywhere. Uh, any weaknesses your opponent may have left after the end of their turn. Uh, generally, you want to also try to attack uh, one chains or one uh, army occupied countries unless uh, a continent provides a better uh, risk in return uh, in terms of the big picture and you basically want to make it tougher uh, for your opponent to to conquer uh, territories that you hold now let's take a look at uh, miscellaneous two-player strategies that I may not have covered yet uh, first off you want to try not to engage the big armies Instead, uh, focus on attacking uh, one and two army uh, countries until later in the game. And if you also want to try to avoid attacking one chains that are connected to a large army, uh, because a large army uh, cannot attack unless they're connected to one of the countries that you occupy. And if you're not connected, uh, that might be a good strategy to try to avoid them. Uh, later in the game, it's uh, better to go ahead and attack the large armies, especially if uh, they're going to attack you, because you want to attack them when you, they, uh, you have an advantage, but that's later in the game and when you have an advantage, otherwise you want to try to uh, avoid them. 
Uh, also, you should consider attacking a continent when you're at a disadvantage uh, due to the re how the reinforcements impact. Like you may have like a one in three shot or something lower than that, or not a very good chance of winning. But uh, if you can lower their reinforcements by like four or five, it might be worth a shot. That uh, doesn't come up a lot, but sometimes it does. Uh, also, keep in mind that uh, if your opponent holds 21 territories and you take out uh, one territory, um, they get less reinforcements. So you want to think in terms of uh, how many territories they occupy, you know, 21, 18, 15, 12, uh, 9, and so forth. Uh, as you go further in the game, remember the cards increase value. And deeper in the game, if your opponent has uh, three plus cards, uh, you might want to consider just going all out and attacking everything they occupy instead of uh, kind of you know fortifying and stuff, because they're gonna uh, have a huge advantage over you. You want to make it as difficult as possible uh, for them to to get back at you. Now, uh, when possible, uh, when you're starting out the game, you want to try to select groups of countries that are not connected to each other. Uh, that makes it harder for your opponent to um, to conquer you by just you know placing uh, a group of armies and one thing they can only attack so many, and it, it makes them spread out further. And uh, this concludes our tutorial for two-player strategies.